This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. In the top of the seventh inning, and BYU will face a new pitcher from the New Mexico Lobos, wearing number 17. His name is Jack Morano, right-handed pitcher. And we talked about uh, big guy, 6'7", 175. He's a sophomore out of Rio Rancho, New Mexico. They're just going up the ladder, I guess. You have Lively, six foot about. Then you have a six six, now six seven. Six seven. Who's the Do next they have guy? a six nine guy? Do, um, we'll see, I guess. I right? guess we're gonna find out. I'm gonna look at the roster and see if they have anybody that's that big. You got I see a six four. That's not gonna do it. A couple of six four guys. Now this is the tallest guy they have on the roster. Hmm. Two tallest guys are there. A couple of pitchers and. The first batter that Morano will face is Danny Jelilich, who came in as a defensive substitution into right field. Danny had started the first two games in right. Danny Jelilich with a lot of speed, real fast. He can definitely beat out almost any ground ball he hits. The first pitch to Jelilich on its way. Pitch outside. A little bit of a different release. Yeah, a little funky guy. One ball and no strikes. The 1-0 pitch to Danny. Turns Ooh. on it. Hits the fence right in front of the Lobo dugout. And that ball was hit so hard that it was one of the coaches leaning up against the fence. I think got a little bit of a shock there. Made sure they were paying attention just, in the dugout. Just keeping everybody honest. Exactly. 1-1 one, one count. Murano delivers to Jelilich. Yep. And they hit got Danny. Him. And this could be how it starts right here. Hey, if there's one person <laughs> that is used to being hit, it's Danny Jelilich. He'll take his base at first after being hit by the pitch, and we're going to have a pinch hitter in Hobbs Nyberg. Hobbs will come in for Pintar. Batting second in the lineup. Top of the seventh. It's 5-3 New Mexico. Nobody out. Runner on first. Morano's first pitch to Hobbs. Swing and a foul right over our broadcast location. Yeah, Hobbs the guy too. Left-handed hitter. He actually has good speed. It looks like he's a strong kid, can hit for power, but is a very very fast, very speedy kid. So you get him and Jelly on the bases and they can do some damage. That pitch outside but called strike two. I thought that was a little too far out, but it hits the outside corner. And now Hobbs behind, no balls and two strikes. That looked a little outside, but close enough. But as a hitter, that's still not something you want to swing at until you get two strikes. Murano looks over to first, sets, ready to deliver the 0-2 pitch, and that's way outside. Nice job defensively by Gonzalez, jumping to his left. Keep that ball in front of him. You mentioned the speed of Jelilich. Had that got past Gonzalez, there's no question that Jelly is in scoring position at second base right now with nobody out. Yeah, with Jelly's speed, with two pitches, he could be in third base. One ball and two strikes to Hobbs Nyberg. Delivered and swing and a miss for the strikeout in the first out of the inning in the top of the seventh. Hayden Latham now comes to the plate with one out. Hayden is struck out. He did that in the first inning. Double in the third. And 
Grounded out to third in the fifth. Facing the 6-7 sophomore, Jack Morano. First pitch taken for ball one. Morano, the sophomore from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Jelilich at first, one out. 1-0 -oh pitch to Latham. Called strike one on the outside corner. Interested to see if they, if this Lobo pitcher, if he still goes to that fastball. Looks like he, he likes that fastball. Hate him, Latham, big hitter. Let's see what he does. Morano delivers the 1-1 one, one pitch and a ground ball. To the shortstop, makes a diving stop. Throw over to second for the force out. And that's the second out of the inning. Nice job there by Kimwell Thomas Rivera. Fantastic defensive play. I thought that ball may sneak past him, but he got a great jump on it, made a nice diving catch, and got over to second base for the force out. And now two outs, and Jelilich has been erased, and the base runner now at first base is Hayden Latham. Yeah, you, you do got to credit this Lobo defense. They have played pretty good defense, and they've been able to make some pretty good plays late in the game here to, to really keep the Cougars off the bases. Murano facing Mitch McIntyre, his first pitch to Mitch, ball one. You know, Mitch, I know he got a hit in the first inning, or the second inning, sorry. You know, you look at that third baseman playing towards second base a little bit, playing way back. He's a speedy kid. I wouldn't be surprised to see him drag bunt right here. Mitch doesn't swing, and the home plate umpire calls it strike one. Don't know if he'll do it, but I definitely it's definitely open. Count is one ball and one strike to Mitch McIntyre, the BYU center fielder. Murano delivers low and inside. And once again, I think we've said this a couple of times, nice block there by the Lobo catcher, Jarrett Gonzalez, the junior out of San Antonio, Texas, 5'10", 195. He's done a nice job keeping the baseball in front of him, eliminating the opportunity for BYU to advance or sometimes even score. Two balls and one strike to McIntyre. Morano delivers. Mitch stays alive, just gets a piece of it. Two balls, two strikes. There's two outs and a runner on first. BYU down 5-3. Jason Shepard and Brock Hale with you from Surprise, Arizona. Not on the main field at Surprise Stadium. We were there for... The Last night against Gonzaga and then the first game against New Mexico earlier today, but the second game, the doubleheader, is on one of the auxiliary fields of the Kansas City Royals. 2-2 pitch, low and in the dirt, and once again, a good block by Gonzalez. And Latham, not able to advance, stays at first. Now the count, three balls and two strikes to McIntyre. It's a big pitch coming up. You got a 3-2 count with two outs, so you know Latham's going. So you get something in the gap here. You get Latham to score, and, you know, you make it a one-run game. Well, going. and Mitch has already walked once. You just get on base, put yourself in with an opportunity to, to have a runner in scoring position at second base. I mean, there are a lot of things that could be positive for BYU in this at-bat, even if it's not a base hit. We've got a full count now, two outs and a runner on first. Yeah, let's see what this pitcher comes with. I expect him to attack him with a fastball. Murano delivers the payoff pitch, and McIntyre gets a piece of it, fouls it back. Nice at bat here by McIntyre. Yeah, it's like you said, all you want to, it sounds easier than it really is, but you just want to do something positive. You want to battle, you want to create, you want to make it hard on that pitch. You don't want to give him anything, right? So, yeah, a walk here is awesome. A hit, whatever you can do to get the next guy up is the mindset you got to have. Another payoff pitch. 
on the way from Murano. Gets the outside corner, and the home plate umpire rings up McIntyre for the third out of the inning. Bottom of the seventh, pitch. coming your way next. BYU down 5-3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. Freshman Tyson Heaton back out on the mound for BYU's third inning of work. His team down 5-3. We're in the bottom of the seventh. A couple of defensive substitutions. Hobbs Nyberg had come in for Andrew Pintar. Well, now Peyton Cole makes his BYU debut, coming in for Hobbs Nyberg. Zach Peterson has moved over to second base. He gets the ground ball from Kyler Castillo and throws over to Deming at first for the first out. So to go over some of these changes, Cole is now at third. That is why Peterson has moved over to second base. So your infield at third is Cole. Shortstop is still Watkins. Second base is Petey, Zach Peterson, and first base is Austin Deming. At the plate, Connor Mang. Two walks and a ground out. One away here, bottom nice. of the seventh. Nice strike pitch Strike right one, now one ball and one strike. Yeah, I like what this freshman uh, Tyson Heaton is doing. He's he's done a really good job of keeping this team in the game. Yeah, I've been impressed with what we've seen out of him. The 1-1 pitch from Heaton, high for ball one, or excuse me, ball two. And the position he got put in, I mean, that's the only thing you can do is just keep your team in the game. So he's done a great job attacking these hitters, getting outs. The 2-1 pitch, chopped foul, pass first base. Now 2-2. Two and two. Cougars are going to have two innings to try and tie this game up or take the lead. We're in the bottom of the seventh in surprise. 2-2 two -two pitch from Heaton outside and a nice block by Valdez jumping to his right. Keep the baseball in front of him. Full count. Heaton delivers the payoff pitch. Low for ball four. Well, no, that was only ball three. I think that was ball four. If it was, good for us that we get another one. Absolutely. Payoff pitch, part two. The count ball is. Ball five or four, however you want to look at it. Either way, it's a walk. The count is five and two. Lobos with a base runner with one out in the bottom of the inning. Edberto Reyes, the designated hitter. One for three on the day so far. Facing Heaton. Ground ball to the shortstop. Watkins over to second to Peterson. Over to first to Deming for the double play. Very nice. And the Cougars retire the Lobos in the bottom of the seventh. Cougar offense coming to the plate in the top of the eighth next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Defensive substitutions for the Lobos. Harry Fullerton moves from center field to left field, and Ethan Barker makes his first appearance of this game, now in center field, a junior from Midland, Texas. Austin Deming at the plate for BYU. We're in the top of the eighth. The Cougars down 5-3, looking to avoid being swept in this doubleheader by the Lobos. Still plenty of time. Deming. Facing Murano, looks at strike one. It 
big, big leadoff hit would help a lot. Morano delivers the 0-1 pitch. That's inside. One ball and one strike. Yeah, just getting that leadoff guy on can really make a difference in an inning. It's, you know, kind of gives you that spark, gives guys other confidence, and then you just kind of keep the train rolling. Dimming, Valdez, and Call do up this inning. Dimming with a swing and a pop on the infield. First baseman Landers there just in foul territory to make the catch and retire Dimming for the first out here in the top of the eighth. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, you get in these late innings. I know we said you got a lot of baseball left. You got a lot of baseball left. Now we're in the eighth inning. Not a lot of baseball left. You're down right? to you're down to five outs. So now it's you gotta find a way. Whatever it is, and it sounds just so vague, but you know, you come together as a team, it's you just gotta find a way. BYU scored six in the eighth inning last night. See if they can come close. That pitch behind nice. Valdez, in fact it hit him on the backside and it's not how you want to get a base hit if you're Abe Valdez, but you'll certainly take it. Any way you can. Building character, building strength, right? <laughs> don't rub it. Throw some dirt on it. You'll be fine. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to show that. Maybe <laughs> a little bit of pain there. Well, now the Cougars have a runner on first and one out. Brian Call at the plate. Call. In for Sapiti, pinch hitter. Now the designated hitter for BYU. Swing and a miss from Murano. Good swing. Two call. And strike one on Brian. One out, top of the eighth. Murano delivers the 0-1 pitch to call. I'll get that over. ball chopped over the head of the first baseman. He's able to make the play and dive head first into the bag at first for the out. Nice athletic play by Landers. The ball bounced high. He was able to snag it and then just dove for the first base bag. Able to get Brian Call out, but Abe advances to second base. So, yes, there are two outs, but now Zach Peterson comes to the plate with an opportunity for BYU to pick up a run here with Valdez in scoring position at second base. Yeah, that is a big run at second base. Going in the ninth inning, only being down one makes a huge difference. Well, and who knows what happens. You just keep this inning going. That's right. Peterson I've looks at the pitch inside for ball one. I've seen Zach Peterson do crazier things. Pacific last year, I'm pretty sure he had a grand slam to, I think, put us up in the tenth. So he's got he's got the power to do it. Don't sleep on Zach Peterson. Petey awaits the one ball, no strike pitch for Morano. Morano delivers, and another pitch inside for ball two. He is determined not to give Zach anything over the plate or on the outside of the plate, at least through the first two pitches. Yeah, it's one of those things you wonder too. Is as a pitcher, are they just going to start? Are they just going to keep throwing the off-speed pitch? Try to get him to chase just because they have a base open. In this situation, I wouldn't think so, just because that would be the tying run. Morano delivers the 2-0 pitch, and that ball hits the outside corner. He does exactly what I said he wasn't looking to do, but it works out perfectly for him. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, a little bit of a. That's a tough break. Big base runner on second for the Cougars, trailing 5-3 in the top of the eighth. Peterson awaits the 2-1 pitch from Morano. He delivers. That pitch low. Gonzalez trying to frame it, hoping to get the strike call. Didn't get it. Now three balls and a strike. Yeah, 3-1, looking for fastball, obviously, you as a hitter. Can't, you just can't chase anything right here. Exactly. You're just trying to get on base, just trying to do just enough. Nothing crazy. Marano with the 3-1 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike two. The count now full to the sophomore, Zach Peterson. You know, now is not the time. You don't want to get big. 
you just want to stay within yourself like we did in that one in three runs you know what did we see grounders up the middle grounder through the six hole single 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 single, single exactly and a single right now is going to score eight valdez you would think you would hope the payoff pitch chopped foul pd stays alive three balls and two strikes i know valdez is not the speediest of guys but you are seeing a deep outfield. Yes, they're playing deep. You're playing, so I think they are willing to give up that run to not give up a, a big hit or a big triple or anything like that. So, and if Petey can go the other way, there's a big gap between first and second. Yeah. The payoff pitch once again, chopped foul again down the third base side. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to challenge him with that fastball. So. We'll see if Petey can capitalize on maybe a pitch that he le leaves over the middle of the plate. And like I said, again, just going up the middle, like you said, there's that big four hole that's open. See if you can go to the right side. But biggest thing, barrel to the ball. Getting solid contact. Payoff pitch once again outside. Very nice And at a bat. fantastic at bat by Zach Peterson, earning a walk. And with two outs, Cougars in business again. Runners on first and second. Coming to the plate, the shortstop, Brock Watkins. Yeah, what a great at bat by Zach Peterson. Fighting off pitches, fighting off pitches, gets a walk, puts his team in a position to potentially tie the game up. Brock Watkins, you know, freshman shortstop, has a chance to do something big here in a time where do, his team really needs do it. Do the name proud with Brock, right? Exactly. First pitch to Watkins, base oh. hit right up the middle, but the second baseman playing it perfectly, gloves it and steps on second base for the final out of the inning. Cougars retired, leave runners on first and second. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Cougars down 5-3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. New pitcher for the BYU Cougars, another freshman. This time it's number 39, McKay Johnson, 6'6", 190-pound freshman out of Dallas, Georgia, making his BYU debut. And, Brock, what we've seen, BYU gave up their five runs in the third and fourth inning. But since then, they've given up zeros in the fifth, sixth, seventh. Now you got to do it in the eighth. got to keep this at 5-3 and then see what you can do in the top of the ninth. Exactly. This is a big inning. You want to keep the score as low as possible. Keep it a two-run two run lead for the Lobos and get back. Johnson facing Harry Fullerton. Right. The first pitch to Fullerton is taken for strike one. But, yeah, you just want to, you just want to keep it at 5-3. Give your team a chance, the best chance available to, to be able to come back. A one pitch, swing and a foul, and McCade quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. The sun is about to go down over the mountains to the west of us, and we're in the west part of the Phoenix Valley in Surprise, Arizona. Timeout called by the home plate umpire. Yeah, didn't really think about it. I wonder if the uh, shadows have any, have any effect on the hitter. Sometimes the sun being in right field, maybe shine your face, if that has any effect. Depending on that, you know, never really thought about that. The 0-2 pitch. Nice pitch. Gets the outside corner, and Fullerton strikes out looking. Nice job by McKay Johnson. First time on the mound as a BYU Cougar, and gets the hitter looking. You know, I've been really impressed with some of these, you know, some of these younger pitchers. They're, they're doing a great job. I know the philosophy that the Cougar pitchers have, and they've done a great job. They've attacked the zone, they've attacked the hitters, and really they've made the Lobos earn what they get. Strike one to the batter, Kyle Landers. I've been impressed with Kyle Landers' athleticism at first base. He's made a couple of plays that, had he not done so, PYU may be in a different situation. Swing and a foul down the left field line. That's going to easily get out of play. Now 0-2 to Landers. Yeah, that's one thing you got to tip your cap. The Lobos have played great defense throughout the game. They've done 
Landers has obviously made some great plays, especially on that double play. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you, you just gotta you just gotta keep chugging along. You gotta you gotta keep keep moving. 0-2 pitch, high for ball one. But yeah, ever since that fourth inning, it seems like both teams have been able to keep each other in check. Just zeros on the board and not a ton of hits. Not a ton of hits since that fourth inning from both teams. BYU did have that one inning with the bases loaded. Weren't able to convert. Uh, but since then, it's been pretty just more of a pitching duel than anything. Swing and a foul by Landers out of play. One ball and two strikes. Five hits for BYU, eight hits for New Mexico. Both teams with an error. BYU's left nine on base. And Landers sends that into left center. And that'll be a base hit for Kyle Landers. It's his second hit of the evening. And now with one out, the Lobos have a runner on first. Well, he can do it defensively. I guess he can do it hitting as well. But even then, I'm still very impressed with McKay Johnson coming in, tough position. You know you have to hold him, attacking. The last thing you want to see is walking guys and stuff like that. So make him earn it. He made him earn it. He got a hit. You move on to the next one. Get a ground ball right here. Johnson, his pitch, bunted. Right back to Johnson, over to first. Nice job by McCade Johnson. Ethan Barker laid down the bunt. Does advance the runner up to second, but Barker is out at first. Did his job. Yeah, it looks like here, obviously with the bunt, the Lobos are just playing for that one run. Hoping that their next guy can get a big hit here and increase the lead to 6-3. Two outs, 5-3 lead for New Mexico. Runner in scoring position, McKay Johnson. First pitch called a ball. As he's facing the catcher, Jarrett Gonzalez. Johnson looks back at the runner at second. And delivers the 1 0 pitch outside for ball two. Gonzalez stepped out of the box, now back in. McKay Johnson looks in, gets the sign from Valdez, sets and delivers. That ball popped up on the infield and in fact, it's going to carry behind room? the backstop, land not far from our broadcast location, hit the sidewalk and bounced up again. Two balls and one strike now to Gonzalez. Coming up in the bottom of, or excuse me, the top of the ninth, it's the top of the order for BYU. Jelilich, Cole, and Latham. Pitch inside Ooh. to Gonzalez. Now three balls and a strike. Runner at second, two outs. See if McCade can battle right here and come back in this count. 3-1 pitch to Gonzalez. Low and outside for ball four and now runners on first and second with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, one thing, not a completely ideal position is walking the nine guy to get to the top of the order. Watari, who has been an absolute nuisance for BYU pitching, does get him to bounce Got into the Great job, ending Johnson. inning ground out to the first baseman, Austin Deming, and 
Here it is. We head to the top of the ninth. BYU down to its final three outs. What can the offense do? They trail 5-3. We head to the top of the ninth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Top of the ninth inning. This is the last opportunity for BYU to see if they can tie this game or possibly take the lead, and they will face a new pitcher, Miguel Reyes Jr. He is a junior from Lafayette, Louisiana, right-handed pitcher, wears number 14, 6'2", 205, and he's going to come in to try and close out the Cougars here in the top of the ninth. His Lobos lead 5-3. BYU led 3-0 in the top of the second, heading to the bottom of the second. The Lobos would score three in the bottom of the third, two in the bottom of the fourth, and zero cents for both teams, and that brings us to our 5-3 score here. And we're at the top of the order for the BYU lineup. Danny Jelilich steps into the batter's box, will be the first hitter that Miguel Reyes Jr. faces. Get down, Jelly get down. pops up into the gap in right center. The center fielder, Ethan Barker, over to make the catch. And just like that, one away here in the top of the ninth. Yeah, it looks like you can really see kind of a visual frustration maybe from guys on the team. You know, just things not falling, things not going their way. Um, but, you know, sometimes this stuff happens and you got two outs to play with here. you got two runs. Definitely possible. You might see the player part of me start coming out, cheering, getting wild. BYU has a pinch hitter. Jacob Rogers steps into the batter's box to face Reyes Jr. Looks at strike one. Base is empty for BYU here in the top of the ninth with one out. Rogers' first plate appearance of the season. Pinch hitting for Peyton Cole in the two spot. The 0 1 pitch to Rogers. Nice he launches one. that one high and out of play. Now 0 and 2. Rogers is 6'4, 205, a sophomore from Las Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised. Watch this pitcher at the end of the last game. I wouldn't be surprised to him to waste a slider in the dirt here, try to get him to chase, and then if he doesn't get that, maybe change levels on him, go fastball up. and 0-2 pitch to Rodgers. Swing and a miss on an inside pitch. And now the Cougars are down to their final out. We'll Aiden Latham. BYU's last hope right now. If Hayden can get on, Austin, or excuse me, Mitch McIntyre on deck. Two outs, BYU trailing 5-3. A loss would drop BYU's record, again, just through three games, to one and two. First pitch to Latham, swing and a miss for strike one. No balls and one strike to the left fielder, Latham. Looks at ball one, that pitch low from Reyes Jr. It's a good take right there. You know, baseball is a special game. It's not over till it's over, so. 1-1 one, one pitch to Latham. Lays off of it, looks at ball two. Nice job. Thing, things can change in a hurry. So hopefully Latham can get a good at bat here get on some type of way and give Mitch a chance to, to do something. 2-1 pitch to Hayden. The ball hit into the gap in right center. And that ball is gone. That ball kept carrying. And Hayden Latham with a solo home run brings BYU within a run at 5-4. Very nice. That was a line drive to right center field. Off the bat, it didn't look like it was going to go that deep. It looked like it was going to hit in the gap. It just kept carrying, and I knew it was gone when I saw the right fielder, Kyler Castillo, just stop. And now BYU down 5-4. to four. 
Mitch McIntyre, the batter. Kids got pop. Kids got pop. He's just trying to get on base and see what can happen. Two outs. The first pitch to Mitch. Low for ball one. BYU's first run since the top of the second inning. They scored three in the top of the second and now one in the top of the ninth. But there are two outs. McIntyre awaiting the 1-0 pitch. Tries to hold up. Does go around. Now one ball and one strike. Hayden Latham, through three games, has two home runs. The 1-1 pitch to McIntyre. Misses inside. McIntyre now ahead, two balls and a strike. Hayden Latham with a solo home run in game one against the Bulldogs. And now a solo home run here in the top of the ninth against the Lobos. The 2-1 pitch to McIntyre. Swing and a miss. And the Cougars are down to their final strike. Would really love to see Mitch get a just really battle here. You, you could know. possibly even bunt down the third base line. Third baseman is playing back deep. Yeah, With two two strikes. He's not he's not going to bunt. But the two two pitch, swing and a miss, and that'll do it for the BYU Cougars. The New Mexico Lobos sweep the doubleheader against BYU today in Surprise, Arizona. Final score, 5-4. The Lobos beating the Cougars. We'll take a timeout. We'll go over some of the numbers on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.